Good evening. My name is Tim Callum. I'm one of the pastors here at Mountain Brook Community Church, and John Michael asked me to uh, welcome you all this evening. And so we are so grateful that you have included this as a part of your Christmas celebration. Uh, just out of curiosity, uh, is there anyone here tonight, and this is your first time to a John Michael Ogletree Christmas concert? Let me see your hands. Wow. A lot of folks. You are in for a huge treat tonight. Uh, I'm not sure how many years it is that we've had the privilege of hosting it here at the church, but uh, this is going to be a very, very special treat, especially for those of you who have not attended one in the past. I don't know about you, but for us, music is such a huge part of the Christmas season. And we actually have uh, John Michael's uh, Christmas CD, and we have worn that thing out. And just to let you know, there are some uh, CDs available in the, uh, in the foyer on your way out tonight, so make sure you stop by the table and, and uh, grab one of those tonight. So again, thank you for being here tonight. Uh, on behalf of John Michael, I know how much he appreciates you all being here tonight. Let me uh, pray for us, and then we'll get started. Father, we thank you for this evening. Thank you for the privilege of gathering together and celebrating uh, that which is uh, really the reason for this season that we're in. Uh, thank you for John Michael. Thank you for the gifts that you have given to him. And Lord, we thank you that he recognizes that those gifts are not only from you, but those gifts are for you. And so tonight, as we, we celebrate, we pray that this would be an evening filled with joy, but it would be an evening that would uh, focus our attention on the reason for the music and the reason for the season, and that is, for unto us a Savior has been born, who is Christ the Lord. Lord Jesus, please be, uh, be uh, pleased with our worship of you tonight as we celebrate um, the gift of salvation that is ours through faith in you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.
you. Thank you so, so much. Thank you so, so much. Thank you so, so much. Uh, this Merry Christmas, first of all. Thank you for coming. This is a little later in the season than I have historically done this. So everybody's worn out and sick of Christmas music by now. So I, that might not have been great planning, but uh, thank you for coming. I know there were several competing things tonight, but you all chose to come here. So um, I appreciate it. Uh, that song was called Reckless Love, and it was the Christian song of the year. And Corey Asbury wrote it. And that is on my brand new album, Here's My Heart. And this is my first concert where it's been available for sale. Um, so this is kind of a weird night for me because I live such a strange life. I feel like uh, my time, I dabble in so many different things. So uh, I'm an accountant to some of you. I'm a pianist to some of you. I have scared some of you at a haunted house. <laughs> I, I have done just a slew of things, but here we are all together as my world collides. Uh, but we're gonna shift now to Christmas music. So uh, this is just a medley of um, some songs that I'm putting together that are mostly from uh, my Christmas album, A Merry Little Christmas.
Thank you. So uh, this next medley, uh, it's a bunch of Christmas songs, and I want you, as you're listening, figure out what they all have in common and see if you can count how many songs, because I kind of sneak in and out. Uh, so do your best, and I'll give you the answers when I'm done.
Thank you. Thank you so much. In case any of you all are wondering, I've got like scattered notes on here, so I'm not texting or anything during the middle of my concert. Uh, and my phone's in airplane mode because that has happened a time or two where I've gotten phone calls. But um, so uh, the answers, the thing that they all had in common, they were all in minor keys. And uh, how many of them, I believe there were eight. So Breath of Heaven, My Favorite Things, Mary Did You Know, God Rest You Married Gentlemen, O Come O Come Emmanuel, We Three Kings, What Child Is This, and Carol of the Bells. So I might have snuck some in there that y'all didn't catch. But um, so 2018's been a, a really good year uh, for me musically. Um, I, I love the opportunity to, uh, to get to do stuff like this because, again, it's not what I do at all. Um, and so at the beginning of the year, I had a few goals, and one of them was to kind of up my game with my online presence. So when you all got here tonight, I hope you were handed one of these. Um, this is my social media card, and it's got a silhouette of me. I think I'm actually taller than that, but <laughs> I wanted to just, I wanted to just exaggerated a bit. But, uh, and on the other side is my name and my Instagram handle and my YouTube channel. So if you are on Instagram or YouTube, please give me a follow. Um, I have now made it to the point where I get paid for this, which is kind of cool. Um, but I made less than $2 yesterday, so it's, <laughs> it's not that exciting yet. But still, it's a good, it's a good milestone. Um, so, and if you're not, if Instagram and YouTube's not your thing, hold on to it and hand it to somebody that is, because that's a, that's a great way that you can uh, support me. And it was a free concert, so, and this, this stuff ain't cheap, so. <laughs> um, so some other things, uh, I got to play at the Lyric Theater, which was really, really cool. Um, and I'm looking into a 2019 uh, more of a southeast tour where I get to do something like this a little more regularly. But um, one of the things that, oh yeah, gosh, uh, and I wanted an update on this, but I don't have one. But I actually applied to, to uh, be in the Guinness Book of World Records for the sh world's shortest professional pianist. It was just an idea I had in the shower one day. <laughs> and I was like, there's just no way. And uh, so it, it's like a 20 week process. Uh, they just got back with me that uh, my applications come up and they're investigating it. I don't know how they could vet that. Uh, and I'm, I'm just gonna be devastated if they come back and be like, you know, we found little Ricardo <laughs> in Nicaragua. He's three foot seven and he's way better than you. So. <laughs> So let's just say uh, I, will, I will initiate phase two at that point. <laughs> so phase one is in the works. Uh, but um, I, so I'm also writing a book. And uh, to, for those of you who know me, uh, it's like almost comical because I hate reading with a passion. I, I buy a lot of books and I can't even read the back cover. I just get bored and uninterested and just the, the act of reading the words off the page, it just sucks the life out of me. <laughs> so, and, and reading music is the same exact thing. So they've got to be connected some way. But I feel really called to write a book. And so my first pass at like a, a first chapter, um, it was just boring. I don't know, it was just, it was about me. It was an autobiography. Uh, you know, there were a few short jokes in there, and like, unless you're a dwarf accountant pianist, it's, you're not going to be interested in it at all. And so, I mean, I might as well just send an email to the other two, then write a book <laughs> to be uh, on sale. So, uh, so I, I kind of flipped what I wanted to do with it. And so what I'm doing with it now is I've, I've taken my life and my story, and I've tried to come up with 31 things that have happened to me, like where God has been really faithful 
and that I can encourage people and, and kind of take that event and have a practical application for you know, people who aren't little people, uh, pianist accountants. So, uh, so, so 2018 has just kind of given me a platform to encourage people. So that's really what tonight's about. Tonight is about, uh, I want everybody here to leave more encouraged than they came. And, uh, you know, I hope you hear some good, uh, some good music and hope you laugh a lot. It's okay to laugh. I know this is just a weird night. It's hard to explain to people. That's why you just got to come to experience it. But, um, but mostly, I want you to be encouraged. And so this, this next song is Joy to the World. And in Psalm 51, 12, I think, this is one of the things I was going to look at right before I got on stage. I think it's 51, 12. Um, David... Uh, had just uh, sinned, and he was praying, and he said, restore unto me the joy of my salvation. And so if, if David's praying for joy to be restored, that must mean joy can be lost or diminished, or it, it can be to something that we don't draw strength from. And so to, that prayer to restore the joy uh, that's what I want tonight to be for everybody here uh, and online watching. And so, Joy of the World, this, uh, I arranged this a few days ago. Um, it starts off kind of kind of minor key-ish. And that's just representative of us, you know, having the joy of our salvation, but it's not restored. And so, throughout the song, it will be restored. And then at the end, um, kind of the grand joy to the world. So I hope you enjoy this uh, next song.
Thank you. So uh, this next uh, song or medley I'm particularly excited about. I want to tell you about somebody that I've invited uh, to be here tonight. So uh, you probably remember him from 2003's season of American Idol, season two. Uh, Ruben Stuttered, he is a Birmingham native. Uh, he is, his voice is absolutely incredible. So the full story is I got on Ruben's website. I found his manager's, or so I thought, uh, phone number, and I invited him to be here tonight. And then I got a reply back, who dis? <laughs> <laughs> so unfortunately, that's where it stopped. So Ruben's not here, which is horrible. Uh, but I did invite him to come. He was invited. And so I'm going to work on that. Uh, upon further investigation, he is on Broadway tonight with Clay Aiken doing a Christmas spe special. So uh, if anybody knows Ruben or anybody who knows of anybody, let me know, because like, that would be amazing to have him here. So, uh, but I do have somebody singing tonight with me. Uh, and as an accountant, Really, anything that I do starts in Microsoft Excel. <laughs> it is just a way I can organize my thoughts. Um, it's just calming to you know, type them and sort them, cut and paste. It's just wonderful. And so uh, I have a lot of friends, and almost too many friends. And so I did a horrible thing, and I put them all in a spreadsheet and sorted them based on how much I liked them. <laughs> and this is a real thing. And uh, so my top three friends are all here tonight. So that's good. And, and again, it's because they're here tonight that they're top three, because like missing tonight, that's like a, I'm going to cut you and paste you at like 12 <laughs> at best. And so. Uh, you know, I want to say I have like an unconditional love for these people, and I, so I'm working on that. That's 2019. But uh, so one of these top three best friends is here tonight, and I want to welcome him up on stage. He is one of the worship leaders here, uh, Drew Kearney, everybody. <laughs> and uh, he's just been such a good friend, and you know, we hear him sing worship songs all the time, but like we don't get to hear him sing uh, like awesome secular Christmas songs. So that's what we're going to get uh, to hear tonight. So thank you for being a part of this. Not Reuben Stuttered is my favorite introduction that I've ever gotten. <laughs> this is not Reuben. And you're, you're by far becoming one of my better piano students, and it's been an honor to teach you the past few years. So. All right. We <laughs>
So have yourself a merry little Christmas Let your heart be light From now on now troubles will be out of sight Have yourself a merry little Christmas And they feel tired Now on, now troubles will be miles away. So here we are, as in olden days, happy golden days. I hope faithful friends who are. The need to wait once more, and through the years we all will be together. If the fates allow, hang a shining star upon the highest. A merry little Christmas Have yourself A merry little Christmas Now <laughs> Goodness gracious. Yeah, he can sing. I love it. So if you remember last year, uh, I had two people sing. Uh, Jeremy is the other worship leader here. Uh, he is in Uganda right now, which sounds to me like he needs to be bumped down at least 10 rows in my spreadsheet. But Jeremy, if you are live streaming this, I'm sure it's like 2 in the morning. You're going to have to screenshot it and text it to me and your position will be secured in the spreadsheet. <laughs> Otherwise, we're going on like at least a two-month hiatus. Okay, so, uh, you know, all ticket sales tonight are going to Drew for helping me out, uh, but that's the bad part about a free concert. He gets nothing. But, uh, like, again, this year, so much has happened. And uh, some friends of mine are here tonight who went to Israel with me. And that just happened in October. And, y'all, it was just insanely, ridiculously amazing. And it wasn't even on, like, my bucket list uh, to, to go. And the trip just happened, and I was able to go. And it was just life-changing. So I hesitate to say too much other than find a way to go you feel safe the whole time, and it, you'll just be amazed at what you see. But, but this is my first Christmas season after going, and just reading through Matthew, you know, just reading words like Nazareth, Galilee, Jerusalem, like I've been to all those places, and, and Bethlehem in particular, um, our church service this morning, we talked about it, and it was just fascinating being there, like right where it all happened. And it's just hard to really explain um, just the feeling of being there. But like one thing I didn't know, did y'all know Jesus was probably born in a cave? I did not know that at all. Um, so we were in a cave and they were like, yep, this is maybe where Jesus was born. I was like, I'm pretty sure you've got that wrong. <laughs> but... 
But, uh, I mean, if you think about it, we were in the shepherd fields, and they were like, well, I mean, we would bring, I mean, he said we, like his ancestors 2,000 years ago, but we would bring the livestock into the cave at night, and then, you know, we would only have to watch one point of entry, and it kept us warm in the winter and cool in the summer and uh, dry, you know, when it rained, so that made a lot of sense. And so they said, you know, there's, there's a lot of these caves here in these shepherd fields. Uh, we don't know exactly which one. And, and as you're over there, you'll see a lot of things, like even where Jesus died and where the cross was. Like, they don't know exactly where it was. But uh, one cool thing to me that stood out was they said, you know, even though you're over here and you're experiencing all this, like, it's not really important. Like, the place itself isn't all that important. Like, but the person of Jesus is. And so that really stuck. Like, as you see everything, it just it broadens your context, but it doesn't change anything that we know to be true over here. But, but um, I just want to play uh, two songs that just kind of uh, speak to that night. Uh, and again, I can't hear the word Bethlehem without, like, visualizing me being there. And so uh, this is a medley of Silent Night and O Holy Night. So I hope you enjoy this one.
Thank you. Thank you so, so much. So in previous Christmas concerts, I've actually ended with that, um, but I wanted to do a little something different this year, so that's why it was placed there. But, um, you know, this is a fun night for me, and I have, this is my third Christmas concert here, by the way, and uh, I could never remember what I've played in years past. Uh, so I went back to my notes to find out. So I figured if I didn't remember, you all sure didn't remember. And like the worst thing in the world is a brand new Christmas song, especially like on the piano. Like that would just be terrible. So I know y'all don't want to hear that. So, uh, so this next one I almost launched into in the middle of a holy night, but it would have been too awkward. So uh, this next one is from my favorite Christmas movie. So uh, it'll be really easy, but I'm not going to tell you what it is, just for the kids. Surely, to goodness, kids are still watching this movie. I hope so.
Thank you. So, so that first one uh, was John Williams' theme from Home Alone. John Williams did everything. He did uh, Star Wars, Indiana Jones, uh, the Harry Potter theme. He like basically every good movie with uh, good music. John Williams did it. And uh, then the second one, uh, I don't really care for the movie, but it's a good song by Faith Hill. Uh, Where Are You Christmas from The Grinch. And then that last one, uh, believe it or not, I had never seen White Christmas before a few years ago. And then when I saw it, obviously, I fell in love with it. So count your blessings, which is such a good one. Um, but what I wanted to, uh, just back to, back to encouraging, um, a word of encouragement for you all tonight, uh, just as, as we're getting towards the end. Um, we, I just wanted to get a little real with you before I, uh, I played my last song. And uh, just there's no other better way to say it than just sometimes life is hard. And like sometimes life is really, really hard. And sometimes it's worse than that. Like sometimes life is terrible even. <laughs> so Merry Christmas. <laughs> so, that's... That's how I wanted to end. Uh, no, but seriously, and, and it's, it's terrible because of problems. Problems make life hard. Problems make life terrible. But the wonderful thing, there's, a, there's good news about problems. So, uh, and, and again, if I was just to get into my, uh, my Microsoft Excel spreadsheet, and if I was to put every single problem I've ever had or ever will have, put them in the spreadsheet and sort them from like the worst problem to like not really a problem, there would be a lot on that spreadsheet. It would take like seven seconds to open. It would be uh, so big. That's an Excel joke for the accountants out there. Uh, so at the bottom of the list though, uh, Krispy Kreme only offers pumpkin spice donuts in October and November. And to make things worse, it's December, and I didn't get one this year, and I didn't think about it until, like, last night. So I've got to wait 10 months to get a pumpkin spice Krispy Kreme don donut. So that's, like, really towards the bottom. Um, something towards the middle, uh, I don't know, like... All the issues with having dwarfism, like those are problems, and there's things on my list that y'all don't have on your list. There's things that will be on my list that y'all won't have on your list. There's a lot of similarities on our lists, and then there's some things that are on your list that'll never be on my list, but we've all got a list. And so some words of encouragement about this list, like I want you to just think about it. Think about some things that rank on that list right now. It's not really tough. Um, so the number one thing on all of our lists we share, and it's the penalty for being a sinner. But there's great news. And that's why we celebrate Christmas. Like our God is a problem-solving God and he has solved that problem by sending Jesus. So our number one problem is solved, which is amazing. And are there any, are there any Eagle Scout, like, I'm guessing this is the youth group, is there anybody working on your Eagle Scout project? Or that's gonna be in like the next four years? Because I feel like moments like this, I need to like whip out a comically small pulpit and just start preaching. So there's no Eagle Scouts? He's not here. Okay, I see a, a small hand back there. All right, tiny pulpit. Oh, he's up there? Okay, good. Tiny pulpit. Write that down. That'll get you at least a badge. Or, uh, that can probably be a project. But <laughs> so our number one sin is taken care of, like done, solved by Jesus. But then we've got the rest of the list. But the awesome thing about Jesus is he doesn't stop there. He says, you know, show me that list. Like, I want to see that list. I'm going to do something about that list. And we turn to the book of Psalms, and 
There's, there's other words for problems. One word is afflictions. And Psalm 34, 19 says this, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. So that basically says your whole list delivered. And that's encouraging, but it's not just any delivery. Because then you turn to Romans, and it says something about that list too. It says that all things, means the whole list, will work together for the good of those who love him. So not only will that whole list, you be delivered from all of them, but it's going to be somehow for your good. And that's amazingly encouraging to me because when I'm in the weeds and I've got problems, I'm just, that joy is sucked out of me and I need that joy to be restored. And, uh, and you know, God's just placed so many amazing people in my life that they're there and they can do it. But he's, he's called me to encourage people and to restore that joy. So I hope... Um, I hope you all tonight just know, like, that's the whole point of Christmas, is to celebrate that Jesus came for your problem list. That's why he came. And it's not just like, oh, hope he, hope he can deal with this one, but that one, I don't know how he's going to be able uh, to solve that. Um, my favorite, one of my favorite moments in Israel uh, was at the pools of Bethesda. And there was a lame man that uh, was there. And I was standing at the pools. And he said, just imagine 2,000 years ago, uh, there was a lame man who was there for 38 years. And Jesus walks up to him and says, like, why are you sitting here? And he, he starts explaining this system and this, this recipe for healing. He says, well, I'm here because an angel periodically comes down and stirs these waters. And if I'm able to get in the water first then I'll be healed. And, and he's like, you know, he wants Jesus, his plan is for Jesus to somehow supernaturally get him in the water to heal him. And I love Jesus' response because Jesus just says, get up and walk. Like, he doesn't need our recipe to do to take care of their, our list problem. I mean, he's God. He's the creator of the universe. He can do anything. And I can just tell you, you know, you might be iffy about God. You might not know Jesus. You might know Jesus, but have some questions. But I'm here to tell you tonight, like, I'm not a concise person, as you can tell. I'm a talker. Uh, but if I had to summarize my entire life in four words wouldn't be anything to do with my problems. My problem list wouldn't even make the cut. My music wouldn't make the cut. My dwarfism wouldn't make the cut. My friends, my family doesn't make the cut. What makes the cut and the four words to describe my whole life is my creator is amazing. And that's my story. And so this is what I'm going through, like writing this book. It's been an incredible journey, and I, I can't wait. Actually, my next concert will be sometime next year as I release uh, that book, and I'll be speaking and playing as well. But uh, I just wanted to, I didn't want to just play a bunch of Christmas music and say, Merry Christmas. Uh, I wanted to just encourage you just to hopefully restore some joy into your life and just whatever problems are on that list, like, God's got it, and it's going to be good, and it might not make sense. It might, it might hurt. Uh, that, that good plan might have some hurt in it, but I think hindsight and after time, you'll see his goodness in it. So uh, I want to just finish um, with something we've never done. I, I want you to actually sing. Y'all have never sung at a concert before. So... Uh, so I'm going to like play it instrumentally for a little while, and then uh, Drew will come up, and uh, he will lead us. So I think you all all know this song. I'm totally kidding. This is not the song. This is... This is the worst song of all time. 
Why this is even a Christmas song, I don't know. That is so sad. Gosh. So, okay, we got another one, though. Another option. <laughs> All right. Not doing that. That one, that one didn't make the cut either. Okay, so the real, the real last song uh, is, is much less eventful, but uh, for real, I hope you all have a Merry Christmas. Uh, Drew will actually come up and, and lead uh, about a minute into it, but uh, I just wanted to thank everybody for coming. Uh, this is always the highlight of my Christmas season, and I want y'all to give a round of applause to Ryan Hoffman, Chandler Wallace, Drew Kearney, and just Mountain Brook community for letting this happen. So thank you. Thank you. Um, and uh, after this, I will be in the back, and I will be uh, selling CDs, and a portion of those uh, sales tonight actually goes towards our church's Advent conspiracy, and we're translating um, the Bible into an unreached language, which is a pretty cool thing that you all can be a part of. So Merry Christmas, and thank you again.